Hi, this is Kiyomi Emmy with IndieExpress.com, and I'm here with Kimberly Reed, who's the director and of the documentary Prodigal Sons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell us about the documentary. Oh, wow. There's, um, there, there's kind of a really quick story, and that's just that it's about a family, just pretty much any other family, all-American sort of family. Everything takes place in Montana, and uh, really wild things happen, and it's ultimately just a, a story about relationships and how families handle big, huge curveballs. And um, the longer story is that those curveballs, well, there's a couple. There's a couple really uh, interesting surprises in the film. One is that my older brother was adopted and had a, a really challenging life. He had a lot of challenges in life. And um, then he found out he's the grandson of Orson Welles and Rita Hayworth. So that was a massive surprise to, to everyone. And uh, the, the other, uh, I guess we're calling it a curveball, <laughs> <laughs> is that I'm transgender. And I came to a point where it was okay for me to go back home. And it was just really apparent to me as a filmmaker, uh, even though I was initially a bit reluctant, that I had a new identity, my brother had a new identity, we had been estranged, and it's time for us to reconcile the differences that we had. So in some ways, it's a family you've never heard of before, but in some ways, in most ways, uh, it's just like every family you know. We have really extreme examples of how we moved on and changed after we left home and maybe have a, diver, a, a larger distance to, to breach mm -hmm. to get back together. But ultimately, it's just a story about sibling relationships. And how long were you estranged from your family? Uh, most of it was uh, just this kind of self-imposed exile. I put myself mm -hmm. under uh, thinking that they wouldn't want to hear what I was going through, that they wouldn't accept me, that people in my hometown wouldn't accept me. Uh, it was, you know, it's kind of hard to define because, uh, but it was about a decade, about a decade, I think of it as, yeah. And then when you went, because you're from Montana, so when you went back for your, I believe you would say you go back for your reunion. Yes. yes right, right. And how was, how was the whole community with you? Because mm. it's very, in a small town, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. 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 Uh, I went back for my high school reunion. And uh, initially, I was extremely nervous. Um, the ice had been broken a couple years earlier than that because my father suddenly died. And that pulled me back into town. And of course, everybody in a relatively small town heard the story about me. So when I went back for my reunion, um, everybody had pretty much heard the news, but nobody had really seen me. So it was, it was, it was a coming out. <laughs> it was a coming out. In the same way that making this film uh, is, is a coming out process for me too because one of the main dynamics in the film is me not wanting to talk about my past and then ultimately having to come to terms with, with dealing with it and presenting it in the film, yeah. Now, were you estranged from your younger brother at all? Uh, we stayed in a lot closer touch, but there was a period where I, 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 was, uh, I, was, I was totally estranged uh, from my whole family. And, and again, it was something that I imposed upon myself, not them upon me. It was, um, I think I needed to, to figure myself out first. And um, there's a, it's also easy to just kind of imagine that people aren't going to accept you for who you've become. Uh, but I was wrong about that. How was that discovery, being wrong <laughs> about that, sort of knowing that they, w that they sounds like they did accept you in certain in oh, this yeah, way. Ab absolutely. I mean, um, I mean, when we went to the reunion and we started filming, we thought there would be drama surrounding that. Mm -hmm. And we would get home at night and it was like, well, nothing happened. Nobody had any problems. Everybody was cool. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as a filmmaker, <laughs> you know, that's what documentary filmmaking is, is about so many times is is getting surprised and hopefully you're nimble enough to, to follow those surprises and uh, just kind of stick with the film that's evolving as it's, as it's moving along. 
Um, so that really became the challenge. But yeah, initially we thought that, um, I, you know, I thought that, that some people might have problems with it, with me, with my transition. Um, but everything, I mean, it, I, I think it says a lot about just who people are, you know, deep inside. Uh, this film, as I mentioned, takes place in Montana. And I think there's a way to um, kind of look at that from the outside and draw some conclusions early on and say, oh, these people would never go for that. This is not the sort of place where that stuff happens. Um, but that's, you know, that's the wrong way to see it because people were, were actually just really wonderful. And you can, so you can never really predict what anybody else is, what, what anybody else is going to say. You don't, you really don't, we never know. Yeah. Right, we never know how people are going to react to anything. Yep. Yeah, you never know. And what I, what I found uh, with this situation, with a lot of situations, is that the most important reaction is your own and what you're projecting onto the whole thing. So that's what I had to figure out first. Did you discover that your brother, since you discovered your brother was, he discovered he was adopted, uh -huh. or, or was the son of, grandson, excuse me, of Orson Welles and Rita Hayworth, mm -hmm. and then you were going through your own transition. Did you guys have any similarities in your in the self-discovery, individual self-discovery that you realized that was similar after you sort of reconciled your yeah, relationship? I mean, um, it, the, the, the paths that we took to these new identities are, are quite different, but just the fact that they are pretty radical changes in who you are as a person, um, there's a, there's, a, there's a great similarity in that. Um, so even though the particulars are different, I think that um, for both of us to have these new identities is what really made it possible for us to, to, to reconnect and to kind of start our relationship over again. And I think a lot of siblings want to do that ultimately, you know, that, that we have to kind of leave home and change and then reapproach the situation and try to work it out as adults. How did he discover that he was the grandson of these two famous people? Yeah, he, through the adoption agency, yeah, yeah, he, he contacted them and it depends, depending on which state you're in, what the rules are, but ultimately he, they just put him in touch with his birth mother who had uh, said, yes, it's okay if somebody comes looking for me that I would wanna be contacted. That's fascinating to me, that whole discovery of this new identity mm -hmm. element. Yeah. This is your first feature length film, mm -hmm. you know, and a, do and a documentary at that, which is uh -huh. amazing. Um, what would you say and recommend to people who <laughs> have never done a film and they want to, they're sitting there having these, uh, uh, an amazing story like yours, mm -hmm. but they're quite on the, you know, on the edge of the cusp of just wanting to do it. What would your advice be to them? You know, um, as with our film, it, you know, there's ways to look at it and say that this this is unlike what anyone goes through, and you know, why should I tell this? And I think that if we, it, if as filmmakers, you can just tell your own story and tell it in a really genuine manner, that it will find its own universal audience. That um, if you if you can speak in a way that's that's sincere enough and, and genuine enough, and I don't you know, claim that I have done that, but it's what I tried to do. Um, I, I think that it will, it will find its way in the world. And from the reactions of people after the screenings and um, people who relate it to their life that um, at first glance would be quite different, you know, really far away, um, but people are able to uh, apply the very specific situation of our film to their own to their own lives, and you know I think that's why we do what we do. Great. Well, it's lovely to meet you. Likewise. Thank you so much for the interview, and we really appreciate it. Can really congratulations on the film. Yeah, and this is Kiyomi Emmy with IndieExpress.com.